Hey, hey fam. fam! Let's be 3D. Hey fam, welcome hey. to episode two of Let's Be 3D. Yes. Thank you for joining us and let's go ahead. Roll call. I'm Jam. I'm Joshua. Abby here. Jacob here. And uh, we are two thirds of the family sound. Yes, that's the, right. Uh, hosts. Because there's not really like one host of the, it's just like all of us. All right. Of us all of us together. We're a team. We're a team. The hosts and hostess. Of thank Let's you. Be yes. 3D. So welcome everyone. Uh, like I said, thank you for joining us. We're looking forward to sharing uh, some stuff with you guys that we touch upon sometimes, but really giving the backstory of the family soul. Right. Not only our musical journey, but like from the very beginning. Well, it is our musical journey from the beginning exactly that, like a what detailed did I say? account it's like it's not just our musical journey like but where, from we started, the where we started where we started to how we got to right. where like, we are now yeah so let's just start at the musical journey that's what that part. i don't know what i meant <laughs> that's, that's can we edit that out no <laughs> no, no. We, got, we can't that's it why it's be 3D. real that's it's why oh, are you try, trying to take the three out of d the three out of d <laughs> three out of 3d what does that mean, Abigail? <laughs> oh, um, I do want to call out the obvious to the super fam. If you guys are watching this, uh, John Mark doesn't have coffee today. That's because I've had three cups already, and <laughs> I don't want to. It's an, yeah. it's an af- This is the afternoon. This is the afternoon, and I ha- I've ha- I had three cups before noon to um, wake me up when. It's- <laughs> yeah, there you go. That wasn't too that bad. That was good. We'll, nice we'll let singing. you keep up being okay, the lead thanks. singer. Anyway, so. Who are we? Well, you know our names now. <laughs> That's um, good. Anyway, guys, welcome to Let's Be 3D. We're going to kick it off with uh, the story of how we started in music. We all began on piano. That's yeah. right. And, right. Which, if you know our song, Grandma's Piano, you know that our great-grandmother played the piano. And I'm going to let Abby start us off because you say it much more better than I do. <laughs> oh. I was like, the real reason is you don't know what to say right now. <laughs> wow. <laughs> hey, once upon a I'm time. I'm being 3D. You are being exactly. 3D. Okay. <laughs> once upon a time, should I start like that? Yeah. Once okay. upon a time. <laughs> there a was a little girl. Far, far away. And her grandmother played the piano. And that little girl was our mom. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Anyway. We're yeah. gonna that was pretty good. That was, good. That good. was done, not like. Done, done with that. Okay. Our mom grew up listening to our, her grandmother, our great grandmother, uh, play the piano. She played piano for their church, but like Southern gospel style piano. So, oh yeah, just she loved music. She loved music. Yes. She escaped in music, mm-hmm. and you know, mom growing up watching her, she wanted to learn how to play the piano. But she never got that opportunity. And so when she had children of her own, that was something she wanted her children to learn how to do was play the piano. If that was the only thing we did with music, I'm talking. What? (laughs) I thought we're just this agreeing whole thing with you. was like all of us talking at like. Well, we're being the, 3D. This... Three t- wow. Okay. So <laughs> let Abby finish s- her essay, <laughs> her speech. I thought I was the one with all the essays. Right? Essays. Wow. Well, I was just going to say. So this is Abby's podcast wow. now. Hey, so, Mark. That's a joke, guys. That's I am rude. kidding. That's I hurtful. promise I'm kidding. Good. good. So, Abby, Apologize. you were talking. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. For those of you who are like me, if someone interrupts me while I'm, I lose my train of thought. Imagine in a group conversation, Abigail talking, and then someone interrupts her. She backhands them. <laughs> I was talking. I don't do the backhand. I do say I was talking. Sometimes like, hey. you want to do the backhand. No, I'm kidding. I can no, tell anyway, myself in that You way. were talking. How about you keep talking? I think I lost my train of thought, but we'll try to pick it back up somewhere. Okay, find Piano. the train. Uh, find the train. All mom wanted um, us to do was play the piano. The search if that's of all Abby's we did, <laughs> of thought. John Mark, stop. If 
that's all we did with music, she would have been happy. But that's not. That's but that's not all we did with music, and I'm gonna hand it, pass the baton to Jamaric Relay Race. Thank you. Is that a relay race? It, yes, yes, that's a relay okay, race. We yeah. don't know. We're not. <laughs> we're not tracking. Don't field you stars. watch the Olympics? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> no, not last year. <laughs> Wow. Oh, that was wow. Bad that was pretty bad. Mm. That's um, a bad joke. Anyway. Did they reschedule them for this year or we're going to have to I don't wait until 2024? I think, I think we're going to have to wait until 2024. Wow. Yeah. That's true. I, and hey, the World Cup's all, next year. Well, <laughs> I'm hurting for all those people who were like training Train, for that. Because yeah. exactly. that's like four years. Yeah. You know? Four okay. years of training. Well, well let's, let's be honest, though. They did get a break. So, you know, they Who might have taken a, some what? time off. They might have, you know. Well, that's, I mean, okay. honestly, if I was looking forward to something like that and training for that, I would right. have wanted So we are like really that. chasing anyway. rabbits in the first <laughs> 10 minutes of this. Hey, look, we so, promised it. So Yeah, exactly. We, we did. did. Promise it. Um, anyway, so, uh, but the I think the beautiful thing with our musical journey is that it was it wasn't forced. Mom and dad were not like, you have to do this. You have to play yes. music. You have exactly. to love music. You have to love music and you must learn to play the piano and be Like a- your great grandmother. Yeah. <laughs> no, that was not, no, that that was not never how happened. it happened. That, that was the thing. Just mom wanted us to try it for ourselves and, you know, see where we went with it. And like Abby said, that's not, we just didn't start right. there. Exactly. Stop there. Stop there. And we did uh, we start all there. start. <laughs> We did. <laughs> uh, we started, so all of us on the at the age of five. John Mark actually started at the age of four. Uh, he's so proud of that. Let's just, I've let's just, just like... say five because that was the general. <laughs> I'm kidding. That was all six the of us, yeah. you know. uh, common age. Exactly. The common? I was the six, average. So. But wow. my birthday's early in the year. That's why I was six. Come on. Yeah. So we were five. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, our wow. piano teachers worked on the school year. Right, exactly. So, Don't you love our bickering? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, our, so... The boys' birthdays are late in the year. The girls' birthday is early in the year, so just the way it works. Okay, so... Anyway. So anyway, that's where we started, with the piano. And then, big boys. Yes. Well, I'm a big boy now. Wow. Almost six foot. Cute. We did have a term, big boys, girls, little boys. Oh, my word. But we've I tried to get and away from that they because They were doing now- it. And I'm like, me and Justice are 15 and 13 now. Um, Can we get away from that term? Yes. So little it's- boys. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird when that your sisters that are two feet shorter than you are hey, like wow. calling hey, you hey, the hey, little hey, boys. Hey, not I'm that kidding. much. That was a joke. Okay. But you know, it's big though. brothers. Sisters and little bros, yeah, younger brothers. Younger, I like younger brothers. Older brothers. That's we're not what I meant. Exactly. I said big yeah. brothers. I meant, I meant older brothers. Anyway, younger brothers. Back anyway, to don't Jacob be and sizest. <laughs> <laughs> oh my word! Oh boy, Jacob and Joshua. Um, there was a youth banjo band. Yes, in actually, Houston. Well, Jacob, there were. Um, we had some church friends that their sons who took piano with us at, at one time. Yes. Um, they were in this banjo band, and yeah. their mom and our mom were friends, at, um, and she introduced us to the banjo band idea, and it was actually run by an old friend of ours that was a music minister at the time, Mr. Buddy Griffin. He was a music minister at a church mom and dad used to attend. And so they were like, hey, you know, it's music, it's it's something else to try. I mean, yeah. they loved piano. Maybe they'll like this. Yeah. And so uh, Josh and I were about the age that, because he had a five, six year age. Like that was the youngest you could be, I think. Of course, but I, I joined at five and well, like everybody. Anyway, it was seven it was to 17. Of, something like that. And, but it was remember. because of you guys, because you guys had done Probably. so well. He was like, hey, let's let this toddler in the band. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> right, right. But, uh, um, Josh and I started, and we had our friends, the Foremans, our good friends. We've yes. known, in fact, this was kind of the beginning of our relationship with we them about 15 know. years we ago. It's crazy. Be, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, but uh, Josh and I started in the Ute Gang, um, and we did that for a couple of years. And then we graduated to the tenor banjo band. The tenor banjo, for those who don't know, is a four string banjo that's played like a guitar with a flat pick, lots of strumming and chords and stuff. And uh, about the time that we graduated to the banjo band, the girls joined the youth gang. Yes. Yes, we did. And then y'all graduated to the banjo band a couple years later. Then John Mark joined the youth gang. And then John Mark joined the youth gang. Um, and yep. Anyway, it was just Flipped a great... it on its head. No, it was wow. a great opportunity. I, let's, let's just say I was not the teacher's pet. 
I was like, if there was an opposite of the teacher's pet, that's that was you. what I was. I was like Aww. the teacher's rat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wow. Oh. Oh wow. <laughs> no. Anyway, oh man, that's not an exaggeration. Though. The, well, it wasn't your fault. Anyway, but that's where we fault. really got our love of stringed instruments. Yes, right. and old music. Mm-hmm. Because, well, right, because that's okay, what we play. Say that well, classical music play. is old music. I was yeah. about to say but, you guys playing baroque but on the, the piano. But that the, was like sixteen hundred. <laughs> but the roots music, yes, yeah, the jazz the, and the blues, the big band and the music, big band the showboat music. music. Yeah. Ooh, it, that's it a term really I haven't heard in a long time. I know. Showboat music. Showboat, Showboat music, music right there. I honestly, that is, I don't listen to it a lot, but I do enjoy it every now and then just listening to, I don't know, there's just a. There's a little to it's it. It's a lightness it's, Yeah, it's like it. Celtic yeah. music. You know? Oh, yeah, the song, for sure. You speaking of show, Showboat, I was, uh, the song came to mind from. Uh, and he gets your gun. There's no business like show business, like no, no business, business I know. I know. Yeah. Da, 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 I don't remember the words after that. Words. But anyway, classic movie right it's there. It's funny when you're singing a song the and you don't know the words, the and you're just aches, like, da 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 You know that song? It goes like, you know, when you're trying to remember a song that you heard and you're explaining it to Siri. And Siri don't know. Siri don't know. Oh, when you're trying to, the hardest thing for me is when like you remember this non this not important line i guess in the song yeah. oh, well it was important to you because you obviously that was the only part of the song you remembered and you try right. searching and you're like that's not the song i wanted that's right. not the song exactly. I right yeah. exactly no, no, no. and there's yeah. like whatever uh, that's you the know, only like, line you can i remember ask siri what song this is but if you hum it she doesn't get it like she gets the recording have you ever tried you... humming siri as well what <laughs> wow. i don't like, let that. me sing this for you <laughs> Well, la, actually, la, la. <laughs> I don't really use Siri. She kind of creeps me out a little bit. So. There's yeah. just the, yeah, the British you. accent is the one I can handle the most because it just it's it's, it's British. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so anyway, oh, the banjo band. A few years into the banjo band, that led us to Silver Dollar City. Yes, it was actually yeah. the Foremans who got us to go to Silver Dollar City. And it was we one were of in... those girlfriend things where they're like, hey, you haven't been to Silver Dollar City? No, let's go. <laughs> okay. It wasn't exactly like that. No, it, it was actually, actually no, pretty it was close. Actually, yeah, it was pretty that close. Was pretty Mrs. Close. Was like, Girl, yeah. we need to go. <laughs> Seriously, Mom and Mrs. Foreman. Yeah. No, those no, were the no, days. The, oh, yeah. <laughs> well, they still are. <laughs> yeah. But uh, that's... That's exactly right. We were yeah. in Guthrie, Oklahoma at a uh, jazz banjo festival. We were about four hours or so yeah, from Branson, like Missouri, that. Yeah. in Silver Dollar City. And she was like, hey, we're this close. Um, have you all ever been there? And we're like, no. What's Silver Dollar City? And so we took off. It was the end of May, which for those of y'all who know Silver Dollar City in May, that's Bluegrass Month. Right. And that yeah. was... That our, was our first taste of bluegrass. Our first real taste of bluegrass. Real taste I mean, we've heard some here and there, but like the real stuff. Like, oh, yeah. I mean, because yeah. it's Rhonda Vincent. It's, this was Rhonda Vincent. Yeah, we saw exactly. her May 30th, 2006 at the Opera House in right. Silver Dollar City. I love how Jacob's like giving a lecture. Like he has like the dates well, the and date, the time. Well, that's, and the, well, that's what... <laughs> I mean, it's my fault that we play bluegrass in the first place. Yes, because right, exactly. Jacob's like, hey, mom and dad, I want to learn the five string banjo. And what all was... of us didn't know what we were getting into. Yeah. And no. I'm they kidding. said yes, and, they were, and they've regretted that <laughs> yes, yes ever since. <laughs> I don't think so. Well, you know what's interesting we did is sometimes. We're like, why did we do this? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you know what's so funny is, you know, we pick on the five string banjo players, you know, just oh, yeah. how loud it Constantly. is and all that. Tenor but banjos just were imagine just as annoying. 50 tenor banjo players in a jam at a convention. Let's just loud. say there was a reason. I mean, it was. I was jamming Ooh. on my ukulele by myself in the hotel room. Wow. I'm kidding. Funny. <laughs> anyway, Funny. but Silver Dollar City, our first real introduction of Bluegrass. Oh, yeah. Of course, Jacob watching Rhonda Vincent in the Rage. And who is the banjo player? Kenny Ingram. He's passed away now. Yes. Wow. But um, he passed away last year, I, I think. I, I or was think it two so. years ago? It's something like that. I think well, it was last but, year. But yeah. he was my first um, introduction to the banjo a lot yeah. of people that play banjo their first influence was um earl scruggs right. or or jd crow or someone like that right. um kenny ingram's kind of a a different 
intro right. into it. Yeah. But uh, he was, I'd, I'd never seen anybody, because I was used to tenor banjo, you know, yeah. you play with a flat pick, you play chords and stuff. Right. I'd never seen anybody use three fingers exactly. in rolling patterns like that. I was just mesmerized. Yeah. yeah. And so I was like, hey, I want to learn how to do that because um, y'all know me. And yeah. I love, I love a challenge. Give Jacob a challenge. Right. Oh, yeah. I love learning He'll something He'll be new. occupied for a week. <laughs> and I Actually, was. an hour, because he can accomplish it in that well, amount of time. Wow. You're very kind. <laughs> well, I, well, I, but I, the I, thing was that you made a deal with mom and dad. That's right. Like, if, All right, of mom. Course, we bargaining did not... <laughs> table time. <laughs> so, not quite. there's this thing called the five-string banjo, and... Um, it's going to be really annoying and I'm probably going to be playing it all day. So I'm kidding. This did not happen. <laughs> no, it, it did, did not. not. The real bargain. Wow. And it wasn't a bargain. It was kind of like a reward. Yes. Kind yeah. We like... don't do that. We don't bar. That's a very, yeah. that's the wrong term. Right. <laughs> Mr. Buddy had a five string banjo player, uh, come to banjo practice. Um, and mine and a, I think four or five others raised their hands saying, hey, we want to learn the five-string banjo because Mr. Buddy's intention was to add another element to the banjo band. He was all about variety. Right. right. In fact, that's where I think we get our love of variety of music that we play right? from. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. Was our, he was our influence and mentor in that, that it's not just about playing the same stuff over and over again. Right. It's about giving people moments and giving people a good time exactly. in different exactly. ways. So right. I, he gave me a five-string banjo, and a friend of ours who heard that I wanted to learn how to play gave me Earl Scruggs' um, book, the revised one, not the original one, and uh, which I still have, by the way. Nice. That's really awesome. cool. But uh, I took that and just sat with it and played everything. Uh, Ma- the deal Abby's talking about was... Um, when I learned how to play Foggy Mountain Breakdown as fast as Earl Scruggs could, um, Mom and Dad would buy me my own banjo. And how long did that take you? Six weeks. Wow. It's pretty amazing, y'all. How about that? Yeah. I still have that banjo, by the way. Right. Not the not the one that was that I borrowed, but the one that Mom and Dad bought me. I well, and you one. know that what's so cool? cool? Speaking of Kenny Ingram, was it three years ago, I want to say? It was 2018, yes? 2017, yes. actually. At Ainge G, Louisiana. I remember I think things by how seven. long my hair was at the time. <laughs> wow. That's how girls... Is that how girls... Put that in the title of the podcast. Like, what hairstyle so, did I have at that time? That's funny. Oh, I think I had that the yes. short bob thing. Yeah. And it was <laughs> so, so that was <laughs> Yeah, that did not yes, last that that was, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. see, guys. Well, three, four years ago. We recall dates on how big our muscles were at the time. <laughs> Oh, I'm kidding. <laughs> that is not true. Oh, Do you brother. remember that? Oh, I was as skinny as a stick. Wait, I still am. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You remember that? <laughs> Sorry. I have no memory of that. <laughs> but uh, anyway. I love so that, Abby. Whatever it was. Um, but but we got brown, to meet him. Yes, you, well, we got to meet him. Back. And <laughs> you told him yeah. that... He was the inspiration for that. And I, what was his response? He apologized. He said, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh was but awesome. he, he's just the sweetest guy oh, ever. That, oh, yeah. I think that was really cool to see you get to meet him. Yeah. That was really awesome. Absolutely. Uh, it was really cool. And he All signed right. my banjo strap. In fact, he uh, and Ricky Skaggs are the only ones the that only have got ones. autographed my banjo strap. Uh, Sammy Sheila? He's on my. Head. Ah, I he's think. on the the original head of on your yes. head. Okay, okay so banjo uh, head. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay, and it was. I'm kidding. I don't think it was the Deering. I think it was the Gold Tone. The Gold Tone yes. was my first banjo that mom right. and dad bought me. Um, that's the one that had all the autographs on it. Ah, okay. Nice. And I got Sammy Sheeler, Kristen Scott Benson, um, Choose the first Rhonda's one band to Daily Mrs. Band. Uh, Kristen? Yes, she was. And then, yeah. You, and now I take lessons yeah, from her. Yeah. She that is, so is awesome. amazing. Oh, oh my so, favorites. So, anyway. Um, after the banjo, um, we, uh, decided, hey, we know we actually didn't decide it. There's a, f- there's the whole story of how we became a band. It was, it, it, we always say, you know, we didn't plan this and we didn't. We really right. didn't. Mr. Buddy, um... At the time, I think it was it was 2010. Yes, actually, yeah. it might have been well, 2009. We did some shows with him. You Where know, it was just like y'all? one time it was just me and Jacob. That was like oh seven, oh eight ish, and then 
you remember the Christmas concert in 09 in Austin? Oh, I do. It remember was the that four of bit. us. And, and I Mr. Buddy. think he might have pulled you up I on think stage. He pulled Joe I, think he I, did. I think he did. Twice. Well, but yeah. anyway, but it was <laughs> in 2010 wow. that he your called like? mom. <laughs> I knew that oh, was coming. Oh, wow. Funny. Sorry, what Josh. What was it about me talking? <laughs> <laughs> well, wow, anyway, Josh no. would out that car. <laughs> anyway. Um, but it was in 2010 that we he called mom, Mr. Yes. Buddy, and said, hey, there's this show that I can't do. Um, why don't you take the kids, go out there and, you know, play the stuff that, you know, y'all have learned from me and just go out there and entertain yeah. the folks. And, well, mom was like, well, I'm not you, Mr. Buddy. Yeah. I don't know how to do this. And he's like, ah, just go out there, be yourselves, you know. Play the music just, you do in the band and you'll yeah, be fine. Have they fun. love kids. They'll they'll be more interested in watching <laughs> kids play than what they're actually playing. Exactly. He saw the potential in a family full of people, kids who loved music. And he was the first. Yeah. He was. And he just encouraged us to pursue it. And so that led us to, you know, leaving the banjo band just because our us pursuing right. that just conflicted with uh, yeah. trying to be a part of a band. Um, which was an hour away from us. Practice right, was yeah. an hour away from we us. Drove, and... We drove an hour and 15 minutes one way every Sunday that we could yep. um, to be a part of the yeah. band. And then once, you know, he did that Don't for us a couple McDonald's of times, and then people started calling the us. I know, that was gross. You know, yes. he, no. these what? people... Hey, that no, was no, no. the best yeah. part of Sunday. Uh, yeah, no. Way to banjo practice. You got a McDonald's smoothie. That I think was I lunch. enjoyed it sometimes, but looking back, that I'm was like, that yeah. was fun. No, but I'm sorry. but sorry, people, that was funny. No, it's okay. Yeah, squirrel. But, <laughs> much more of a uh, not a. I'm not much of a smoothie person. Much I'm a more smoothie of a person. Shake person. Yeah, yes. gotta be ice creamy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not really anything fruity, fruity was. Yeah. Bleh. I'm not big on fruity without mm -mm. Fruity? chocolate. Now give like, me, give me something with nuts. I'm not what? big on nuts. So I don't like nuts in my ice cream. It's You're too weird. hard. It's Jacob, come like, on, man. Um, anyway. <laughs> I like cookies no, in my ice cream. Back right? to you, No, So um, who is talking? It's okay. But I thought we said we could chase rabbits. Yeah, wow. Trying to keep it light. <laughs> I wish I could do We're the totally Jeopardy hypocrites. theme song. What? <laughs> I wish I had my banjo to do the Jeopardy theme song. While yeah, we don't wow. need the last thing we need is Jacob's. You know what? I wish I could play themes. Which? Theme <laughs> <I can. laughs> Bad Bad man. Man. No, just no. kidding. But anyway, <laughs> um, so Mr. Buddy would give us these shows to go play when the band couldn't. Yes. But then people started calling us and saying, right. "Hey, we we saw you at this place at such and such, and uh, why don't you come over and we'll pay a couple hundred bucks, give you a meal and." You know, the we meal was the vital. Free food. <laughs> yes, that was like, yes. Well, some of it was good, but there was that one, that one place that oh we, my had, word. oh my word, that was disgusting. We got a uh, food poisoning uh, one yeah. time. Well, I don't you think did. I don't think it was food poisoning, but seriously, it was so bad. And you're it was just like, like, you remember like, like the no. pineapple salad or whatever? It was, oh. oh, which by the way, oh. can, can we just so everybody knows, pineapple upside down cake. Why? I love pineapple Why? upside down cake. Pimento it cheese is sandwiches. Disgusting. Why? Okay. You know, wow. just take oh, off those the pineapple churches? and eat the cake. Oh, okay. this is funny. If you are fine. a church and you are listening to this, if you are a part of a church, and especially you are a Baptist church, this, and you guys have sandwich night or pot or whatever finger food, and you bring pimento cheese sandwiches, please do not offer that the band takes them home with them. <laughs> <laughs> Because no, true. This has happened to us a, a couple of times. If their name is the family Sowell, <laughs> we will not eat it. <laughs> or we will soak it in mustard. I remember. Oh, I oh goodness. It, and it still didn't. Anyway. It didn't I cover mean, it up. Uh, thank you for this food to nourish my body. <laughs> it's like, Lord, um, could you change this into like um, Bluebell homemade vanilla <laughs> ice cream <laughs> on the way down, please? Um uh, could you no. help it taste okay. like that? All, to all the <laughs> right. churches out there that have fed us, thank you. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Genuinely, yeah. thank this you. We do, a free, uh, yeah. we do appreciate you. Free food is good, except, except food if it's moldy. Great. <laughs> except if it's moldy. <laughs> anyway, that's not quote. the point. <laughs> we were talking sense. about becoming a band. Yes. Right. So, so but that people continued. started calling us, yeah. and we're like, hey, this might actually be, be something we want to do. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Right. And so just, you know, show after show, year after year, it kept. Um, 
getting bigger. And after the first couple of years, we, like Abby said, we really couldn't do our, uh, the Sal family pickers as we were known at the time right. and the banjo band. Yeah. And we saw, because with the banjo band, um, there was a graduation thing. So it wasn't, there was more longevity in yeah. our own band. Right. And uh, anyway, so becoming a band, and we, at first, the first couple of years, we kept doing the tenor banjos. Right. The uh, Dixieland jazz, the showboat music. A couple of bluegrass songs thrown in every there. One, you were Every once in learning. a while, we do Foggy Mountain Breakdown. We do the yeah. hee haw. We do the hee haw. We did the ballad of Jed Clampett. Yeah. Josh was saying like Ellie And May. of course, oh, as Can you we still got do that? more... I'm not going to attempt it because I haven't warmed up. That was super. (laughs) That was super. Mine was really lame. There there are some people, a.k.a. John Mark and Abby. Wow. That can. And I mean. Is this good? That that can just break out into song and be just like just free for all. Uh, I am perfect pitch. I cannot do that. Joshua, you I have to be warming like up for myself. Half an hour. I've got to go. Won't okay. Sing. What key am I going to sing this in? Is my voice warmed that. up? Okay. It is. Here we go. <laughs> me, I mean, me, seriously, me. I Fake go thought, through that. Thought, it has taken me a long time to get to the point where I can just, you know. I well, love, like, Joshua, let me pick never... a key. I'm like, I'm not, I'm just going to sing what comes to mind right now. Because yeah, I can't do because that. I can't just pick a key. You will never, ever there. see Joshua just waltzing around the house singing a song. No. No. Like in Lord of the I Rings. Don't. Now, I will vibe to a song, you know. Well, yeah. But I love the songs in Lord of the Rings. They're just really cool. You're not I'm supposed to be Lord touching your mic. Right wow. You're okay. touching your mic. Uh, <laughs> keep your hands to yourself. There are certain rules to having a podcast. Yes, and having one a podcast, is don't touch the you mic. You can't slurp your water. Because <laughs> 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 he's laughing. While the- <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> and now he's coughing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Huh. The germ of Oak's face. Oh, over right. Here. Anyway. anyway, are you okay? I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, totally so fine. we anyway, did that for a couple. Yeah, yeah. That's like 2011. Yes. Uh, then a new instrument a came new along. A new instrument came along. John Mark, this one's yours. Yes. Time for Jam to Talk. Finally. <laughs> Woo. I'm kidding. No. Well, it's all your fault anyway. So it is all my fault because I this, thought it was the anyway. banjo player's fault. You thought the, it banjo, was the banjo player pl- is wow. loud. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I can testify, and I do apologize for the two years of squeaking. Let me tell you, Wait, son. What? <laughs> there is there are very few things. I mean, out of tune guitar, mandolin, bass, even a, I mean, banjo is pretty bad. The rest of them are okay, but there is nothing, absolutely nothing wow. worse than this an out of tune fiddle. This hurts. I, no, there is one. What's an out of tune bagpipe. <laughs> Bagpipes in general. Our bagpipes oh, is loud. Are they yeah. even tunable though? No, <laughs> no you got to squeeze the air Maybe. like this. I don't Maybe even it's a know what way it is. You squeeze it. I don't yeah. know how to play bagpipes. Oh, I remember Seriously, that one time. You think the banjo wow. is loud? Seriously, was it? It was 2018, right? Yeah. There was so a bagpipe. We. This was after the Youth and Bluegrass contest. We were all kind of hanging out and stuff, <laughs> and this young lady had her bagpipe with her, and she was like, "Hey, can I play a song?" And we were like, "Hey, sure." She blasts it and we're oh, going man. okay cool Can you imagine a courtroom in 1448 with like a hundred of these playing the king's theme is that serious yes, yes. that is oh, serious. serious like the bad pipes for the national there is well, no yeah. rock band, band that can compare so. to well, it's like in chariots of fire when the british team comes out Right. They're playing the national airs. Um, right. But I do have to say the bagpipe music that's going in my head is from Brave. Yes. Yes. That is the, <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> and the, like yeah. they're all fighting and they're like. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I love that. I love okay, that part. Anyway, okay, back to the fiddle. Um, <laughs> right. We started. It wasn't the fiddle. It, it was, was the, the violin. violin. We, Me and Abby started Suzuki violin lessons. I was six years old. <laughs> I just turned seven. I, I was six. It was right before my seventh birthday. Sorry, I'm, I'm recalling. Let me clarify How, what this. What was my hair at that time? <laughs> Which, by the way, it'll be I don't ten think years. that's going to go. Just yeah. September. I know. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, wow. So Abby that's pretty and I cool. started Suzuki violin lessons with a f- violin teacher in a, Ryan College a Station. Violin a violin teacher. T-shirt. 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 
<laughs> a very proper footing. Yes. For, and actually, I did not play the violin for two weeks. I played my shoulder with the bow. <laughs> Are you serious, Mrs. Yeah. Burke? No, no, I remember the... that. I oh, remember wow. that. It didn't it's rosin like, my bow because like, she didn't want to get rosin on my shirt. It's like an onward where he's like, you position it like this. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And focus. Yeah. Anyway. Whatever. Anyway, she was a great teacher. But anyway, first recital six months later yes. after I could play Mississippi Mud Pie three times straight <laughs> in a row. Is that what you played for the Are recital? You nice. <laughs> oh, wow. What did you play for the recital? Popcorn and candy? <laughs> That was a name. What is those, that? that was a name. I didn't do as many exercises. For those of you who have taken I actually Suzuki did the drills, you know exactly I was 11. Wow. We apologize. I, I was like, I and was I, learning real songs. Well, I right? actually had had some fiddle background a little bit before then. I was playing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Cute. For Mississippi six mud pie, Mississippi mud pie, Mississippi mud pie, Mississippi. It's funny the way we're singing. Small, <laughs> baby steps, small beginnings. Hey, small beginnings. Good. Anyway, at the first recital, mom and dad turn to each other and go like, this is not our style of music. So, yep. um, our, the foremans. The foremans again. Uh, yes, the foremans Woo! again. Told our us lifesavers. about uh, uh, Robert Herridge, yes. who is... Um, my first real fiddle teacher. Oh my goodness! Um, in uh, Belleville, and that's uh, right. We started with him. I took for him from him for about three or four years. He not only helped me so much with starting the fiddle, but he helped us as a band. That's yes, right. He, did. he, he did. was he the was first. Our first ahead. band coach. He was the first one who taught us how to play as a band right. with a metronome. Exactly. That's right. Yes. And I tell you, that has been probably one of the best things that could have ever been told oh, yes. to us, for sure. Definitely. Right, and the fiddle just, I mean... You oh. really blossomed with him. Oh, yeah. You could tell. Yeah. It just, you know, scales weren't your thing. <laughs> wow. Yeah, no. <laughs> he right. was like, you were writing songs at what, age 12? Uh-uh, eight. 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 Age Eight. Yeah. In fact, that's when thinking, you wrote me. Captain Jack's Dilemma, um, isn't it? I was thinking no, I was no. that was, uh, that was uh, uh, fiddle faddle. Fiddle faddle. Oh, fiddle faddle. And then, Sorry. you know, don't you hate when you write a fiddle tune and you realize it's like the another fiddle tune just in a different time signature? <laughs> and you're like, that was dumb. Small <laughs> beginnings. Hey, beginning. look, it happens. Beginnings. You're all right. But anyway. So we, we, got, we got a fiddle. Because we play in Texas, we had to have a fiddle in the play. Exactly. Fiddle in the band. And that's really what made us go full bluegrass. Almost. It yes. right. was. Combination around, fiddle banjo. We we're like, hey. Around 2014. John Mark and I will take we the blame. Went, yes. we, we take, we fully. Uh, around 2014, we went full bluegrass. Like where we kind of. Uh, I would say 2013. 2013. We, 2013. We, because 2012. That's when we, we did the uh, Battle of the Bands at Salmon Lake Park. Yes. 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 My goodness, that was a long time and, ago. Uh, Joshua anyway, did the ballad. You know, a unique you were the reason story. We won, man. No, a unique story surrounding voice. Battle with the ba- Bands. He I was take no credit for that. that time. Go ahead, Abby. Sorry. A unique story surrounding Battle of the Bands. So there was two different contests. One was the prize to be booked at the Bluegrass Festival that they had at Salmon Lake. And another was to be, the prize was to be booked at a gospel festival, a bluegrass gospel yes. festival they had at the park, Salmon Lake. Anyway, so we entered into both contests and, you know, still as a family, we weren't full, fully certain that this is what God wanted us right. to do. I remember yeah. that, yeah. And daddy was praying hard. And he said, God, if we win this, if we win one of these, I will be certain that this is what you want us right. to do. Yes. So really like Gideon placing that sheepskin. I'm making sure I have my biblical stories right. Yes, the fleece. Sheepskin. The fleece. Yeah. The sheepskin. <laughs> the skin of a sheep. Placing it. The skin of a lamb. Placing it in front of God and just asking that he reveal, you know, that this is what he wanted us to do, being certain and everything. Anyway, we won the Bluegrass Gospel. Right, right. And I did not know this till quite a few years later, which I'm very thankful because that would have kind of discouraged me at the time. But the really unique thing about how God um, had us win that was that we were the only one who 
um, right. really participated planned. in right. the bluegrass gospel. Right. We were the only one who signed up for the bluegrass gospel. So that's kind of why we won. So we won because we were the only one. Right. And honestly, we weren't that great at the time. We weren't. People if you enjoyed have our us albums because from that time. I'm sorry. <laughs> You can use well, I think they enjoyed the fact that young people were playing bluegrass yes, music. Right. But Very it, true. It's not like we were awesome. We were <laughs> learning and growing, so right. that's a good thing. We were trying to get better and better, but you know, baby stuff, small beginnings. We weren't like prodigies. Well, no, we but. weren't outstanding. <laughs> John Mark anyway, John like, Mark's like he's not a prodigy. I'm kidding. <laughs> anyway, I take I take it back a little bit, but we weren't a little bit. we weren't Mozart at age. <laughs> anyway, at five. No. No. I wasn't writing but piano composition no. at five. <laughs> but how God answered that prayer because He wanted us to Even keep still, going. If it was it's, like it's that, unique you know, how God ans- answers our prayers sometimes in like a way that. Sur- is different, yeah. but he's still making it clear. Yes, this is what I want you to do. Right, anyway, right. I just I think it's a unique and kind of humorous story about how God made it clear that we were doing what we were supposed to be doing. Anyway, so that got us into full t- full on bluegrass. Full on right. yes. bluegrass, exactly. From there, we progressed um, with uh, the mandolin and the um, bass and. We already played those. Joshua already played the, those instruments. I meant the acoustic guitars. Yes. Excuse me. Yes. With flat picking and all of that. Yeah. Um, the funny thing is we used the mandolin in the banjo band. You yeah. guys used the mandolin in yes. the banjo band. Not the way you played in bluegrass. No, no, not the way you played in bluegrass. But um, from there on, anyway, Joshua, a little bit about the acoustic guitar. Well, um, just my journey. Yeah. yeah, because yes. you kind of started okay. doing that at that time. Right. Well, I was actually, um, we uh, when I first started learning the guitar, it was you know much more like the basic chords and whatnot. So when we first got into bluegrass and I heard a lot of the lead picking and stuff, it's like, oh, I want to do that, you Ooh, know? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. just, but a lot of it was what I did by myself. I, I mean, I just figured out the melody and just ran with it. You know, I didn't um, think about, you know, improvisational specifics and, you know, certain ways you could form a solo or whatnot. And, you know, um, I did have a few lessons as I progressed, and that kind of helped me solidify. I also had a couple books, a couple DVDs. But yeah, again, yeah. nothing really solid until... Um, IBMA 2016 and I do want to mention before that is as a band you know we that was during that time up until 2016 that was we were just progressing we started playing in different states we started um, really traveling quite a bit and um, getting our name out there and then in 2016 we competed in the youth and well actually we did spigma we first we did spigma first we did spig we competed at spigma we uh got second to last place which you know Sometimes it's one of, it, at the life, time you need to get i mean seriously to last we place. were we were <laughs> i don't know so about true. anybody else but i was devastated just like you know i thought we would at least get to the yeah. second round cuz there's three rounds um and we kind of were but sick, but because of that, it gave us I was drive. Dead sick. Abby was in dead how sick. to in she how to. She sounded like me. Wow. <laughs> Ouch. We it gave us drive to keep <laughs> learning, think. keep studying, and then we competed in the youth and bluegrass. Yes. Didn't place it, but we did get good points though. I mean, we were we pretty did. close. To and the we top also seven. one of the one of the benefits of the 2016 contests. Um, was that we caught the attention of Mr. D.A. Callaway, right, who exactly. is the event coordinator at Silver Dollar City. Yeah. He's the man, well, uh, that's true, he has retired now. Thank you for reminding me of that. He's the former event coordinator, Miss Amanda, who was his um, assistant, is now the full-time She's event awesome, coordinator. Y'all. But Mr. D.A.'s, he's the man. He's amazing. But uh, he was one of our judges at Spigma. Yeah. Um, I remember... It was the day before we did the contest, I think. It was like, maybe it was Friday. 
Like so, right. the contest at oh, Spigma yes. was Saturday and Sunday. Yes, yes, yes. So we did this showcase at Spigma on Friday, and we're about two songs in, and he walks in. Right. Oh, we. And got so you're so going nervous. like. And we're all yeah. inside. I mean, we we try not to let it show, but yeah. inside, I know I'm inwardly screaming. Like, yeah. this is the man in charge of one of my favorite places. I mean, Silver Dollar oh, yeah. City. Oh, yeah. Uh, we've probably, we probably haven't vacationed anywhere else half oh, of the yeah. time. Oh, we've good. gone yeah. to Silver Dollar City. Silver Dollar City is, it's not just a place where we learned about bluegrass. It's actually our family's most frequented vacation spot. Yeah. Honestly, and I have to say this real quick. Silver Dollar City is like a second home. For oh, me. It is for sure. Every time I walk in the park, it's like the familiar scent, the familiar oh, yeah. place, like the cattle yes. corn, and you're just the like blacksmith oh, shop. Yes. I'm home, and I'm, we I'm love sorry. Silver Dollar it's, City. Yeah. It's, oh, it's an been, awesome. It's Ooh, so it's catching awesome. his attention at Spigma first, and then Youth and Bluegrass, he booked us for the next year, yeah, that's even right. though we hadn't yeah. even placed. Yeah. Um, he booked us for 2017 to play at Silver Dollar City I during know. the Barbecue and Bluegrass Festival. So and like, I don't want to forget to mention, we also, in 2015 and 2016, played for the first time at Dollywood. That's right. And that's, oh, yeah. you know, we that's sort of where we started the relationship there. It was much more through singing news rather right, than, right. you know, now with working with Mr. Roger White, the event coordinator at Dollywood. Great, Great guy. guy. He is just... Top of the line, y'all. He's awesome. Anyway, but back to the guitar. So we go to IBMA for the first time. And seriously, y'all, you want to talk about going from like, okay, if this, you're seeing this, this, this visual, it's pond. this big of a pond to, I mean, just. The Bluegrass Pond in Texas ass. is about the size of a dime yeah. compared to the. Just overall dollar bill international of, yeah. dollar bill. You know, of yeah. the IBMA. The col- over, it was culture 200, shock. Two hundred thousand people. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Anyway, and that's where I met Jake Workman, who is the guitar player for Ricky Gags. And if y'all have been um keeping up with Bluegrass and all that, he won guitar player of the year last year. Um for wow, IBMA and just <laughs> You know, he is such a humble guy, but he and he's an amazing teacher. And he is just, I mean, the guy is just nuts on the guitar. I mean, he's truly one of the best. Been such an inspiration to me to, you know, really, really mainly confidence, knowing that I can play the guitar, yeah. knowing that I can get out there and give my best and bring it every single time I play a solo or just play rhythm, you know? Yeah, yeah. So. And then, so moving on from there, 20, uh, 2017, what, we it? did Spigma 2017 No, again. but where did, where did we meet Mojo? Uh, we met I him. I want to say IBMA. Was it IBMA? I want to say IBMA of 2016. Yes, it we was. We were at yes, his, was. he okay. was doing, right. so one of the things at IBMA, they have youth only events right. that's run by their youth council. And um, one of the youth events was a band coaching session by Mojo, who is uh, Stephen Mojan, the guitar player for Sam Bush. Um, a great guitar player, oh. great teacher. Yes. Producer. And producer. Right. I mean, uh, he does awesome. everything. But uh, he was doing a band coaching session, and he said that he does it, um, he does private sessions as right. well. Right. So mom contacted him, and there's there was another family band in Texas that wanted his band coaching as well. So between the two family bands, we covered his traveling expenses and he came to our home in late 2016 Mm -mm. or early Early, 2017. Early 2017. Okay. And uh, he came to our home and... Spent two full days with us? uh, I want to say three. I want to say three. Okay. So like that, and that was our... He did did every other day. So one day he was with us, one day he was with the other... uh, It was the It was the Doucettes. So one day he, he was with us, the other day... He was with the do sets and then us and then do sets and like that. Yeah. yeah. For a week. And that was our first full on experience with a professional. Yes. From yes. From the Nashville area. It's just crazy. And man. so Gosh. we, it was, it was again the next, you know, you look back over any journey in life and you can see like this was the next step for me and this was the next step yeah, for right. me. Right. And so like 
you know, that was the next step for us. Right. And people would mention throughout right. the next, the coming year, y'all have gotten so much tighter as a band. And what he really taught us, what he really focused on was listening to each other yes. and yes. trust playing as a unit and trusting each other as bandmates. Yes. And that's kind of like a life lesson right. about is. trusting the people around you. Yeah. You know, it's Sunday and we that's had right. a family worship this morning and we were talking about how, you know, trusting God to do the work in each of exactly. us. Mm-hmm. Um, that sometimes we get so caught up in how God's speaking to us and what God has shown us and trying to, to make sure everybody else lines up with what God has shown us or right. is teaching us in that moment or just our opinions on something. And, you know, I think as Christians, it's so dangerous to get into that place that you have to show everybody else and make sure everybody else is lining up right. with what, you know, God ha- what season God has you in. Exactly. And take on the work of God yourself and try to work in other people's hearts instead of, you know, just being a willing vessel and letting God do the work in the other person's heart, not being, not being quiet if God wants you to speak about something, but not thinking that it's your job to convince right. that person. Only speaking right. when God wants you to speak. Exactly. And I think take it back to a band mindset that that was really, and we're still learning, you know, we still oh, yeah. get into we still like, with that. trust the band. Yeah, They're working yes. as hard as you are. Um, <laughs> and just like, you know, you trusting me to sing my song. I'm trusting you to learn, have your guitar stuff down pat and mm. that you're listening to the band and I'm listening to the band and we're working together toward this goal of presenting the best music we can. And so anyway, that was a big step for us. That was a, right. huge was a major step, step for us. And that really, um, I, you know, the next, right after the band coaching session with Mojo, uh, we did Spigma again, and this time we placed, that time we placed ninth. Right. Yes. And uh, but, so we made it into the top ten. But is, I wanted to say right quick, something we learned, and this influenced us every single time we did a contest after that, is that you just go out there, give your best, and leave it out. Leave Have it all fun. out on stage. Have fun. Yeah. But seriously, that third, the, we made it past the first two rounds. We were just relieved. We were overjoyed. And, and so we were like, you know what? Let's just go out there. We got nothing to lose. We were not going to win. No. Just with the we points were actually, and everything. We were actually out of the top 10 going into the third round. Right. Yeah. And so we were like, you know what? Let's just go out there, give our best, and see what happens. Well, honestly, it was hard for me. Um, and I remember crying after the second round just because I'm very much of a person that can be influenced by people's opinions of right. me. Right, right. And can be influenced by by you should try this or you should do this. I'm like my whole musical journey has been really, you know, and I'm not saying I've arrived there, but I know I have learned so much to where, you know, not saying that other people, experienced people who um, give encouragement that I shouldn't like dismiss it, but that I should take it with a grain of salt. Right. I don't even know really what that means. You got to learn how to filter But to filter... (laughs) Like, okay, what can I take from that? And what do I just need to let rest um, and not consume myself with trying to please that one person? Because then you come along to another person and they have a slightly different opinion on how you should present your music. And so anyway, I remember just hurting after that second round. And so we came back, we skipped 2018. And then we came back 2019. Hold up, honey bear. Hold on a second. Hold up, honey bear. Yeah, yeah. we got a few more. We got two more But I just wanted to roll out into Spigma 2019 that, yeah, we placed ninth out of like 11. Right. Um. So we were still third to last out of the bands. Right? Yeah. 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 
<laughs> but still, but it's better than we came back up. 2019 and just our whole perspective was so different. I remember I was like, I don't want to know the scores. I don't. Right. Yeah, she was and like, don't tell me. Don't tell we me just let the I just scores. Know. Where Later. We we, you did tell me where we placed, but you didn't like tell me the full scores okay. and everything. Yeah, because we'll we were going to... Anyway, anyway, we'll get I just we'll we'll remember the mindset change. We'll and, get to 2019. Oh, so after here. 2017, after 2017 Spigma was... The Youth and Bluegrass That's right, Youth and Bluegrass contest. And I, I remember that because 2016, it was just like... It was the first time for me and... I, anyway, it was a really mixed feeling of emotions. I was wondering what was written on his hand. Abby, I wrote that <laughs> down so I wouldn't forget. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Wow. Okay. Um, it doesn't say, tell Abby, I love you. So that's... Oh, man. Song. You anyway. missed that. Oh, wow. wow. I did say that this morning. I'm kidding. Wow. Um, anyway, with 2017 Youth of Bluegrass, it was like... It was... And I actually learned it from Spigma. 2017 was just leave it all on stage yep just go out there i was 12 and so yeah you know you were like a foot shorter than jacob <laughs> i do remember that yes i remember that. but so it was cute. just like you know just get out there do it have fun and leave it all on stage and whatever happens happens exactly yeah. and i remember when they were calling out the places and then your they, heart is hammering. They, You're just they like they hadn't called okay. our name yet. Okay, whatever happens, you know? happens. And, and then gone. they call second place. It is not us. And you're like, okay. Do we win or, or do we, we like, blow it? Blow <laughs> it. <laughs> that that's the thing. Well, you oh, remember man. 2017? That's the first contest we. Well, no, it's not the first contest we did. Double went down to Georgia. No, and, because we did that because we did it at Spigma 2017. But we did but the we double did down to Georgia. At, so it like, was the oh, very end, and the crowd went. Completely and then wild. When Da stood up, took oh, yeah. off his hat. Oh, he took off his hat, started clapping. And was like, yes, like <laughs> boom. How about that? And then so, uh, of course, we won. Yes, and that was just insane, you know. Because, but and you felt very accomplished. But then again, you you remember that's not why we did it. We did it no. to have fun, yeah. and that's I think an ele an element of why we won. Yeah, was that. We were just doing it to have fun. And yeah. I yeah. remember the first round, I was completely cool. I was like, okay, we go yeah. out there, do it. And I was completely round. relaxed. Second round, my heart was hammering like yeah. the okay. whole time. My legs, there's only two times that I have been so nervous. That second round at, Sp at KSMU and then la final round of Spigma 2019. Yeah. Yeah. Because anyway, we'll get to we'll Spigma get to 2019. Spigma. But anyway... One KSMU, and then next, we participated in the Jeff and Sherry Easter. Actually, I think Jeff and Sherry Easter was before oh, it was KSMU. Before. Oh, But wow. it's okay. Excuse you messed me. up. It's, it's okay. okay. <laughs> that's but we, that's but we, like the most said words in our family. But we took, you messed up. It's we took okay. Pla we took <laughs> place. We took part in that and won that, and that gave us the opportunity to, to go work with into the studio with Jeff one of Easter. the funniest guys oh my word. It was, in the it studio was awesome. If you can imagine me and Jeff Easter in the same studio. If you've ever seen Jeff and Sherry Easter in concert, Jeff Easter is just a down-home North Carolina country boy. Oh, yeah. He is He is <laughs> so funny. He's awesome. And being in the studio, we spent a whole day in the studio with him. We did our uh, EP that has the Sal Family Bluegrass with the Mission. That was our first The Family Sowl. Our Sowell. first The Family Sowl. That um, was a thing. huge. That was the that was the name well. change. That's yeah. when we did the the rebranding. Right. We took the pickers away and switched our names. Before we were the Sal family pickers, right. and we didn't think that was very um, we lasting just, we did into more our adulthood. Yes, into <laughs> yes, where family we wanted picker. to go. Well, we we were also mainly pickers when we started, and then we kind of took on singing, and, and so then we right. didn't we want to be the Sal family singers. So. No. 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 Ew. Well, there are other Ew. there are other gospel groups we knew called that. You know, the this and and oh, that family me. singers, and we <laughs> wanted to we wanted to be different. And uh, actually, the whole family Sowell thing came from our mission trips, which right. could be another topic for another yeah, podcast. Yeah, like, let's not get down uh, that rabbit hole. <laughs> but one of the, the way they introduced us in Serbia, they the, the way they introduce it is they have the word for family and then the family name. So, yes, Emilia uh, Porodica. Is the Poetica, the Poetica, Poetica. 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 Poetica
Mi familia. All the, all the Serbian people listening are going. <laughs> He's an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. But anyway, oh, that's Sorry. where we got the family the style. Poetica. We thought it was different. We thought style. it was cool. Yeah. And so we went with that. Anyway, back to Jeff Easter. That was That's probably up with spending time with Ben in right. the studio on Same Kind of Different. That's probably second. Oh, yeah. As far Definitely. as studio experiences. It was yes. amazing. Anyway. Anyway. Well, before, you know what? Oh, we goodness. forgot to mention we a forgot very something. In- important part of our band. Is, yes. And that's singing. And how we grew with that. And there is a very special lady by the name of Miss Vicki Niemeyer. Yes. And she was really just, and she still continues. We still. We still take. um, Specifically me and Abby still take um, vocal lessons with her. We kind of started back that up this year. We did. And it's just, it's such an, she is such an encouragement and just really keeps you grounded in the fundamentals of singing. And just being relaxed. And well, it's going to be five years. We started, years it will be September, six October. Years. Six years, 2015. Six years. October, 2015. We started six years. in 2015 when we really wanted to. We had taken from a couple other vocal teachers. And it just, it didn't really stick. They were, I would say, not as professional vocal teachers. Right. Um, not that we didn't learn anything from right. them. Just not where we wanted to go. And I'm talking. No, it's okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Wow. Being 3D, y'all. <laughs> they were the kind of teachers that taught you how to sing like they did, rather than exactly. teach you how to open your own voice. Exactly. And that was the difference with her is that we, it was, she just laid a foundation. So, like, we started from scratch, especially I remember with Joshua was like, okay, we're going to oh, yeah. learn how to breathe now. We're going to learn <laughs> how to right. breathe. Because so Joshua first, would not breathe. You open your mouth. <laughs> anyway and just laying that foundation of course moving to knoxville we kind of didn't take for from her consistently for a f- couple years but now we've gotten back with her and just like it's, like, it's foundational exactly. and it's yeah. it's it, it's, it's good. just amazing it just yeah. gives you confidence especially for exactly. someone i mean both me and abigail we struggle need with <laughs> struggle with confidence in our singing. So having that person encouraging us and cheerleading us and yes. just you know, keeping us grounded where we're supposed to be, it's like, yeah. I mean, for a while I was since moving to Knoxville, kind of just taking from anybody who gave me their opinion on how I should sing. Right. <laughs> um and not a, a good idea, people. people. So for those of you who want just encouragement, if you're pursuing something you know, find that person, find a couple people at the most, yeah. but mm-hmm. you know, don't try to listen to everybody cause it's exactly. not worth it. You're going to, I think you're going to just get exasperated by the, the amount of opinions out yeah. there. The more opinions yes. you hear from people, the more often those opinions are going to disagree with each other, exactly. which is going to lead to a lot of frustration. And you're just like, okay, how I just want to sing. <laughs> right. And so just having that, one person, well, two, honestly, with working with Ben, um, but that one consistent person that I work on a weekly basis has just been really, yes, building Inspiring. my confidence. Yes. She's and no, awesome. I'm doing it right. Yes. Thank Jesus. Yes. Amen. I like doing things right. <laughs> <laughs> so then. 2019. Wow. Well, Big the, I think what, well, we skipped a year, you know? We, we took a year off. Right. And well, 2018 is the year we moved to Knoxville. Exactly. And, and so, we didn't take it off, off. We just didn't do contests. Right. right. Well, ex- that's what I meant. We didn't do any contests. And um, anyway, so we go to Spigbit 2019 again with that mindset. Yeah. Like, hey, let's just do this for fun. And, you know, why not? Right. Right. You know? Um, and we won fun, the whole th- thing. I, I No, I remember after the first round. We were first place. We were first place. It was such a great feeling. No, but it was... It was was also a terrifying feeling. I'm sorry. For a guy like me, it was a great feeling. That first day, the first two rounds, I was feeling great. That last round... You were freaking <gasps> out because okay, so we the were first. The pressure of we keeping first, that right, number exactly. one title, though. We were first after the first round, okay, and so we're like, okay, <laughs> let's try it again. <laughs> All right, 
right, guys. See you later. <laughs> wow. Okay. Anyway, so second round, and then after that, we're f- still first place. And then, so we have to sleep. Yeah. yeah. And, Which, and then you wake up two fresh day with nerves. Right. Friday he was first and second round. Final round was sat. Uh, excuse me. First and second round were Saturday afternoon, and then Sunday morning or afternoon, early Sunday, Sunday afternoon. afternoon after yeah. the the service and stuff. They had the final round, yeah. and we've we've been in the con. We'd been in the contest. We'd watched the contest, and we'd seen bands that started out. You know, right up there, right up there, and then they the, tank the third round, blow, blow it in the last round. Anyway, we didn't want to do that. Thankfully, I was we so did. Nervous. We did it, but seriously, I and they, so of course, nervous. they prolong the announcing the top ten place places, and you're just sitting there like mm, you're expecting them to call you at fifth, and then they don't, and then fourth. fourth. And they don't. Third. Third. And they don't. And then the second, second, they call that. And we know we didn't drop out of the full top ten. <laughs> so At least we hope sad. we didn't. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hope we didn't mess up that bad. Right. Anyway, well. but so. yeah, winning Spigma was just, it was really big for us. And it also, it was a confidence booster. Exactly. You know? Yes. It, you know, we were, and we, we worked hard. And, and that's the big thing is, did we we did not have a goal to win no. at no. all costs, no. but still we worked towards it. Right. right. And we worked hard. And that's the thing. You know, you gotta earn it. You gotta yes. work hard. Yeah. And we're still working hard trying to, you know, just keep growing. You can't settle. Exactly. Never that's settle. Right. Um, you know what one of my favorite things about preparing for Spigma twenty nineteen? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I my hope y'all did not God hear that. Word. Can we edit that out, please? We no. were, um, anyway, we're just some of us. If y'all heard that, I'm you're sorry. laughing right now. No, but one of my favorite things about Spigma 2019 was we discovered our love for Allison Krauss. Yes, Union Station. we did. We learned three songs, we one did. for each round, yes. uh, for Spigma 2019. And, and of course, we are, this will be released in three days. Sorry, movie quote. Three days, Fagan. Um, three days. <laughs> three sunrises. Three, three sunsets. sunsets. And three of days, course, on Fagan. YouTube, we have a special theme for April. Abby sings Allison. And Allison is my hero. Because as if you've ever heard me sing, I do not have a very... I think it's gotten what? more confidence over time, but oh. it's a softer toned voice. But I yeah. love it. And a main, right. you know, you... Young girls who sing mm-hmm. bluegrass, they always go for the round of Vincent sound. Yeah. Or you hear that a lot. I'm, I won't say always because that's not true, but you hear it a lot mm-hmm. is that round of Vincent sound. And of course, I don't have that type of voice. Um, So just kind of embracing, like, oh, Allison, yes, I can right? sing like that. Exactly. I can, that's something I can work towards, not that I try to sing like Allison. But she does inspire me. Right, mm-hmm. it's an it's a great influence to yeah. have. Yeah, exactly. and you've anyway, been compared to her too a lot. So, doing that on YouTube and remembering, you know, where we got started with Alison Krauss. She is our most covered. We cover her the most. Right, but yeah. it's yes, fun. Absolutely. So many. So, so cool Spigma stuff. 2019 led to a lot of stuff for us. We played yep. at Romp 2019 in, in 2019. That's right. And we've uh, kept up playing at. Silver Dollar City every year, which yes. is always a blast. Um, unfortunately, we didn't do it last year, but we're we're going to be back there this, this May, year. Yes, and but really looking forward to getting back to Silver Dollar City. Yes. Josh. Well, I was I was going to say last year and this year we're playing. We started playing quite a bit at Dollywood, and yes. Yes. we really built exactly. that relationship with Mr. Roger Wright and the people. We White. really right? started White. White. That's you know, right. Silver Dollar City is kind of special to us because of, of the childhood memories yes, and yes. growing up going there and stuff. But Dollywood has really grown, has become a special place as well because, yeah. you know, we're s- this close. We're only yeah. an hour away. and Less it's than that, just, 45 minutes. But it's just a great place. I mean, oh, there yeah. are some great people there. I mean, we're just performing there. You know, it's, you know, there's that, it's that. Um, I don't know. Words are one of my lost favorite on things. Right now. And, anyway. and we did it with Silver Dollar City. We is to get to know the sound techs right. that we work with. And at Dollywood, um, we've gotten to work with Eric and Jason. 
uh, Noah was this past because we were it was uh, yesterday, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. That it was we, yesterday. Well, today's well, Sunday that we're recording this. You're not Saturday. hearing this till Wednesday, but Saturday we got to play at Dollywood, and uh, Mr. Jason and, and Noah set us up. But I yeah. I enjoy getting to talk to them and hearing you know what they like about Dollywood, exactly. and what they like to do because some a lot of times um, the sound techs at at the theme parks we've played at at least are that's usually their second job right is they're usually some kind of musician or engineer somewhere else you know on right. the side or something exactly. like that so it's really cool to hear you know what they do and here's a, here's a great lesson if you are a band and you're listening to this podcast either on Wednesday when it comes out or later a year if you from come now. across this podcast a year here's a here's a great future. lesson and some great advice if you are performing at, you know, a convention center or festival or, you know, like Dollywood, Silver Odyssey, whatever, make friends with your sound tech. Be nice. Because, yes, please. Beca- because, please be nice to your sound tech. Because be that is a relationship a that you want to have because they will take really good care of you. Well, I think that... No, but that. seriously, if you make your... If you... The sound guy has the ability to make you sound bad. <laughs> well, I so think that don't give him any reason not and, to do that. You know, we're gonna wrap this up now because we'll talk more about oh, just yeah. our music and everything. And of course, if you check us out on social media, you'll see, you know, just how our music um has grown even in the past year yeah. and just us always trying to get better and the goal is to never stop growing exactly and to never stop learning and you know um just we always we said last podcast about having a challenge every um i hear a lot of chatter in the background (laughs) um having a challenge every podcast and so i think if i can take on the task of (laughs) challenging our audience right is to you know whatever you do if you're a musician who plays in um, event at events? I was trying to think of another word. Ah, my vocabulary. <laughs> events is a good anyway, word. Anyway, events. If you play out in side, public, in, in public, public, if you play concerts in public and all places. Of that. Anyway, or if whatever you do, I mean, walk in a way that people want to be around you. Mm, you know of course there will be people that don't like you and it's not your fault okay that they don't like you you know in the in the bible it talks about you know the world does not know you does not love you because it didn't love me it didn't know me and so we can expect that but there will be people drawn to loving people to people of character to people who respect you right. and what you do and that's you know what y'all were saying about the sound tech and i've seen it how people have opened up to us because we were just kind and we were just there right, and it wasn't right. like we were trying to be kind to get something out of them it's just how we want to walk so it wasn't like we were trying to walk differently than how we try right. to walk at home yeah. and so that's my challenge to you is to walk in a way where people want to know why? Why are you this way? Exactly. Anyway, that's awesome. Anyway, one last, last thing. one last thing, and it's okay. Last, two but last certainly. <laughs> oh, we got two. Okay. Well, apparently, but Jim one, said one last thing. But it's the same. I believe it's the same thing. It's the same thing. Anyway, oh, okay. Yeah. But the oh. best thing that has happened to us in the last couple of years is connecting with the great. Ben Isaacs. Big Benny. Yes. I think Big that Benny. is wow. the highlight I dare you to of say my that musical to, to his journey face. Oh, has been yes. ben working Isaacs. with Ben. He's Y'all. the next major step for sure. Right. I Absolutely. mean, the guy is one of the nicest, coolest, funniest guys you'll ever meet. I He's mean, so the, relatable. He is, he is the self-proclaimed king of awkward moments. <laughs> I mean, it's serious and so. quite, um, quite deserved. Yes, <laughs> I have to say that. But, it's but a not great, only it is lightens he, the mood for sure. Oh, oh yeah. definitely. But he's he's not only a great guy, but he is a musical genius. I mean, just 
sit in on one of his sessions and you'll just be blown away. Oh, I mean, absolutely. just absolutely amazing. Has really, he's added that professional touch to a band, you know, to our band because, um, you know, it. This is, you know, when we recorded same kind of different with him. That was our first real professional, right? You right. know, Nashville quality recording and right. just working with with someone with that caliber oh, just yeah. really and he and Mark Caps the engineer I mean they just yes. such great guys and they just are so encouraging so motivating to you know that you you bring your best and you know Oh just, yeah, but still have fun, you know. For have a great sure. time, you know. Definitely, yes. they're awesome guys. That's right. Um, if you're still listening, if you're still with you us, thank it. you so much uh, you. for listening this far and spending this time with us. We really appreciate you joining us for episode two of yes. Let's Be Three D. And I hope we'll we be were back. 3D. Uh, we were very three. <laughs> we'll be back for episode three next Wednesday. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we love you guys. Uh, y'all are awesome, fam. And uh, don't forget to be 3D. You know? yeah. <laughs> hey, subscribe. Hey, make sure you Thank subscribe you. for more. Yes. And if you want to check us out on social media at Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, we'd love to connect with you there. For also, sure. uh, if you want to see some live performances of us, we stream. Uh, weekly on volume.com you can join us over there uh, for a couple hour streams of lyrics laughter and love and uh, for more dope merch and cool stuff and ways you can uh, provide monthly support and investment in the family sowl uh, at our website check that out at thefamilysowl.com yes so thank you for joining us family sowl signing off for now and we will see ya in the next episode of let's be 3D. And as always, peace, peace, love, fam. The views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect the opinions or standard of the family sound. Have a lovely day.